Welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast, where we interview real estate investors and lenders so you can learn all the secrets to getting your projects funded and scale your portfolio. Learn about fix and flip loans, Burr financing, rental, fix to rent, commercial, multifamily bridge loans, business loans, and so much more. And now, your host, Bo Eckstein. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Investor Financing Podcast, and I'm your host, Bo Eckstein, and today we are going to talk about how to buy a small multifamily property with little to no money down. Let's get started. Top tip number one is, of course, we always shoot for seller financing, and why would a seller want to sell on seller financing? Uh, Oftentimes, they'll want to sell uh, with paying as little in tax as possible. And if you learn about installment sales, that could be a very good tool for you as a buyer, right? Some of these sellers are, you know, they have enough money and they're just, they're looking to sell the property, but they don't want to 1031 exchange it and defer taxes. They're ready to be out of real estate completely. So learn about installment sales, and learn how to talk to sellers about the benefits of selling on an installment sale. You're listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. Are you looking for funding? Are you getting frustrated trying to find a lender? Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and click the Get Funding button. Complete the simple form and schedule a free phone consultation with one of our placement specialists. We have a proprietary directory of funding partners that can help you get the funding you need. It's fast and easy to explore the options available for your specific needs. Don't wait. Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and get connected. Also, they just might be interested in getting rid of the property without any hassle, right? They don't have to market the property. It's easier to sell on terms and they feel like they're helping you out as well, right? So it goes back to building rapport with sellers. Uh, Number two way or technique to buy with little or no money down, you can go bridge loan with a seller carry back second. So you, you might get a bridge loan for 75% of the cost, including the CapEx and rehab. Seller carries back 15, 20, or 25%. You come in with little to no money there. You uh, get the property stabilized, running better, improve the property. Now you got a higher value in theory by forcing appreciation, refinance a year, two years down the road, or maybe the seller will stay in for a couple of years. But if you're going bridge financing, that's usually a 12, 24, 36 month term, but that's a great option where the seller feels good because he's getting cashed out partially and then they carry back a second. And you got to think, what what's in it for the seller? Well, maybe you're giving them a little bit better price because they're carrying back a second. So there's ways to finagle these type of negotiations. And I just want to give you a couple of tools that might be a benefit for you. Number three, bridge plus JV partner. So another way to structure these deals you could go out and as you're networking with people, right? A lot of people want to invest in real estate. A lot of people have money, but they don't have time. So maybe you find the right money partner. You go out and get bridge financing of 75% or 70% of costs and find a money partner that basically comes in and maybe they're a 50-50 partner with you. Maybe they're a 30% partner. That's kind of up to you and up to what you can negotiate and, uh, you know, how uh, aggressive you can be and how great the deal is. The better the deal, maybe you can, you can negotiate a little bit in your favor more. Um, and then there's just the traditional um, find a partner with money, right? Um, maybe you, you dev- dev- develop a business plan. One of the partners has got access to capital. The other partners got access to deals. Um, so creative, creating these structures, these financial friend um, relationships are key. So when I was doing a lot of flipping in the beginning, I didn't have much money. So I got a money partner and I also partnered with a contractor. Uh, the contractor would do everything at cost. The money partner would obviously put up the money and it worked great. I would share in the profits, but some profits are better than no profits. Uh, additionally, what you can do is you can go and potentially do a master lease on the property where you lease the property, get it running correctly, raise rents, uh, increase net operating income, and then refinance the property down the road, pay off the um, pay off the seller at that time. You can also option the property. There's many ways, there's many tools that you can use. I just want to throw out some in this episode where it might help you kind of think outside the box 
on getting these, these deals done. Uh, sometimes I've seen people do, uh, maybe they're a real estate agent and they write in the purchase agreement that they're going to get a, a, you know, a 10% commission. Then they apply the 10% commission to closing costs or to a down payment, right? There's things you can do in commercial financing, to create these win-win deals. I see people structuring deals all the time in creative ways. And we always wonder how do people actually really buy money or properties with no money down? People do it all the time. I can say I've done it many times. So it's out there. Just educate yourself on these structures and don't be afraid to negotiate. Thanks for watching. See you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. For show notes and useful resources, please visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. For questions or comments, email info at InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. If you enjoy our show, please share it with your network. Until next time.